Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, continuing on with hypertrophy myths number four. One top set, one drop set. I'm sure you've heard that one before. What exactly are we talking about here? So <clears throat> the myth goes that you should train something like this. You do warm-ups, you warm up, then you hit your one top set, big set, close to failure, sometimes all out. After that, you hit one drop set. Um, the scare quotes are for a reason. I'll tell you that in a bit. With like a 10 to 30% reduction in load, you get more reps. And then you move on to the next exercise, usually doing like four or five exercises per muscle group just like that because it's two working sets at a time. So with like a machine chest press example, you do 100% of 10, 150 for six, 200 for four, just warming up. 205 pounds for a set of 12, 165 for a set of 15, and then you go on to your next exercise and do three or four other chest exercises. Okay, fine, very good. Here's the good news about this kind of method of training, which is one top set, one drop set, switch exercises. You can't do an infinite number of hard, heavy sets, for sure. It's not like you can do eight top sets or some shit on one exercise. Especially if your stimulus to fatigue ratio for lower reps kind of sucks and your stimulus to fatigue ratio for higher reps is good, you can drop down the load pretty soon and just after several or even in some cases one top set, dropping the load down and going to higher reps gives you an all-around better stimulus to fatigue ratio. Hey, awesome. And down sets, which is the planned drop of load after certain heavy sets are done, to continue to do straight sets but at a lighter load, same exercise, down sets can be very effective and may have, in some context, big stimulus to fatigue ratio boosts. However, unless you just don't rest after the heavy set and you go right into it, it's actually a down set. It's not a drop set. And a lot of the people on Instagram, bodybuilders training one top set, one drop set, they're actually doing one top set, one down set. So they didn't even get the terms right, which bodes well for all the other shit they didn't get right, which we're getting to. Right away. So what is the bad stuff? Well, there's a couple problems here. First problem is why just one top set? Like if you do a set of 12 ultra hard and heavy, do you have to go and do a set of 15 after a lighter? Does that mean if you did another hard set and you say got nine repetitions that somehow those aren't very stimulative anymore? They're not very hypertrophic. They're not muscle growth promoting. Like a hard set of nine is like pretty fucking stimulative. And, you know, there's no reason to do a down set or another exercise at face value, right? If we really knew that the first set was just so great and the second set was just so ineffective, we could be like, okay, that makes sense. But we don't know that. And in fact, we know the opposite of that, that multiple high quality sets can be achieved with the same load or a very similar load. So first, just the one top set, one drop set doesn't make sense in this context. I'll tell you why people do it in a little bit, but it's, this is not a scientifically based situation. Another thing is if you have to do one top set, one down set, or one drop set, drop set, it's really down set, how many exercises do you have to do for that muscle group? Well, if you need to hit two or three, one to three parts of a muscle, really, uh, through the whole week, you don't need to hit them all in the same session. So that means you can do one to three exercises and three on the high end per muscle per session. You can do it with more exercise. Let's say you can do 10 sets total. You can split that into five exercises, two at a time, how this would be done. Or you could do like four sets of one, four sets of another, two sets of a last one and go. You know, five versus three exercises. Here's the thing though, if you switch exercises often, you need to rewarm up for the exercise because you need to retool your technique a little bit and, and get in the groove. You probably don't go to your working weight. So you're just adding warm ups. You need to go to another part of the gym. Sometimes your machine is taken and you can't train with that exercise. You have to wait a little bit. Like, why do that? And, and also, in the long run, eating up your variation like that, like if you do your five best chest exercises every time you train chest, when one of them gets stale on you, what do you replace it with? Like you're already using your top five. If you were ever just using your top three, you could take number four and five and replace them in, get rid of another one. Everything recycles and they're all, you're only ever using your best stuff. But if you use all your best shit right away, it's kind of bad news. It's like if you're, uh, if you're, uh, geez, why am I going to say this? Should I really say this, Scott? 
fuck it. It's like if you're you know, again only getting into some adult films and mm-hmm. and you and you and you buffer all your heavy hitters and you just go through those, but nothing's happened yet, bro. You're done. Save that shit for a rainy day. You don't have to use all your best stuff all the time. It's nonsense. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, keep reading the Bible and the Quran and the Torah, and you're doing well for yourself. Problem here is that it's a short-sighted approach. We're taking a little bit of the long view, right? Here's another related thing to the so many exercises. If we do one top set, one drop set, and we leave, we're forgetting the fact that the second set, still heavy, and even the third set can often feel even better from a perceptive stimulus to fatigue ratio experience than the first set. Because here's the thing, the first heavy set I mean, you're warmed up for it, but things get creaky. Your knees and elbows feel a little weird. It's shocking. It's your first heavy set of the day. You're like, oh, that was good, but like, whew, it really took it out of me. If you take that same weight after a nice rest, three to five minutes or something, check all the four-factor rest boxes. Google that if you don't know what that is. And your second set oftentimes feels fucking better. Your joints feel better. You're in the groove more with the movement. You're feeling the muscle more because it's warmed up. You had a chance to get really connect. The third set sometimes is the best one. Are you okay? And the fourth set starts feeling a little stale. But the idea that you only have one heavy set and that's going to be your best feeling set of the heavy weight and then just one more down, down set technically drops it as they call it. And then it's time to switch to another exercise. Fuck that. After two sets, I'm just getting in the groove at an exercise. My third set's usually the one where like, oh, fuck yeah, now we're rolling. Fourth set, I'm like, okay, great. That's good. And fifth set, I'm like, okay, fine. I'm out. Let me do another exercise. But the idea that it's, you only have two effective sets per exercise, and then you need to move on. Man, it's just not true most of the time. So, like, why the fuck are you fucking off? There's no good reason to do it. Um, you know, it, it, it's kind of like this is a terrible analogy here. It's kind of like ending a, a date that's going real well after heavy petting. Like, you get up there in the apartment with her or whatever, and you're like all getting on each other, and she's like, okay, okay, I think I love you. Let's do this. And you're like, I gotta, I gotta get going. You know, and she's like, oh, it's like a religious thing or whatever, because I'm cool. You're like, no, 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 just um, I just like to, when things are going really well, I like to get out. Even though they could be getting better, I like to just leave and go to another exercise, which in this case is me going down and finding another young girl to meet, summarily talking with her and getting uh, to another one of these situations where I don't actually finish off the act. It's fucking stupid. It makes no goddamn sense. Now. Why do people train like this? That's a fine question. One is that it works fine. Look, two hard sets, one heavier, one lighter, great. Multiple exercises enough to fill in your volume requirements. It works. It works. So it's not like people that train like this are going to be like totally like small or weak or disaster or injury ridden. It's a fine way to do things. It's not the best way. It's needlessly complicated, needlessly annoying but it's not the worst way that you could train by a long shot. So why do they do it? Certainly not because it's one of the worst ways. It's still effective. One top set often zaps people so much because they're really big and strong and they go to failure and beyond that they're just not into getting into that pain zone again. And they like the pump feeling of a down set. It's easier on the joints. It feels great. You just pump it out. So it's kind of like emotionally driven training. Like ideally, if you think about like what it would be like for you if you were like a champion basketball star and you're like, what's your life going to be like, bro? Like if you're a fucking, you're Michael Jordan, like, and you have his kinesthetic abilities straight up, even 10% better than he ever was. What do you think your life's going to be like? What are you going to think of? You close your eyes and be like, yeah, I'm going to be dunking on motherfuckers winking at the crowd, drinks with the boys after at the club. Great. Be like, okay, what about the fucking 180 minutes of the worst game ever with 20 fouls and you're tired as fuck? And it's like still the score is real tight and it's coming into the end of the game. You're like, wait, 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 hold on. Hold on. I don't know. That's not, that's not basketball star shit. This is exactly basketball star shit. You better love that shit too, motherfucker. You better like early morning practice. You better like weights with the team. You better like sitting in a fucking, you know, 
uh, chartered airplane flying to Japan for a fucking ex- expo and you can't sleep and you're sitting there like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? Who am I even? And all the other stuff. So when people think like, I'm going to be a fucking bad- badass pro bodybuilder, one top set, one drop set, and I'm out. Give me a new machine, something. But the reality is that that is preference, but it's not ideal. And the ideal is you put in a little bit more work with the heavy shit once you're warmed up to it, right? A lot of people are just like a bit on the lazier side. They just don't want to grind multiple top sets, even though that's very effective. It's the most effective thing, but they'll take just a little bit less effective to get away from all that noise. And a lot of times they're kind of bored and uh, not so great on the attention span focus. So they just want to use a bunch of fun machines. I mean, who doesn't, right? You're traveling to a new gym, you want to try all the machines, right? Yeah, but th- that, that doesn't mean it's the most effective thing in the world. So again, this isn't terrible to do. What I want you to get out of this video, very pedantically stated, is I want you guys to look at the videos of bodybuilders training, for example, doing one top set, one drop set, and not be like, oh, like, I wonder why they're doing this. There must be some intricate, insightful, scientific, effective thing about it. Nah. Some of the shit they do is definitely intricate, mostly with farm. But this example is like there's just people doing stuff that happens to be short, to the point, fun, and nice and varied, and they don't have to fucking grind. They're just trying to get away from the grind. But if you realize that that's why they're doing that, you probably wouldn't fetishize them so much and be like, oh, I'm going to train just like this guy because he does t- one top set, one drop set. You'd be like, what? What the fuck? This is because they're lazy? I should really be like grinding multiple top sets? Yes. Oh, fuck. Like, I just want you guys to realize that it's not always, not everyone's shooting for optimum. And even if they say they are, sometimes they're really not. They're just using things that are convenient for themselves. So it's not exactly rocket science. What can we get away from this? What's the real talk on this? Here's the thing. Bit of a technical guide. First, warm up. Great. Hit your first heavy work set. Stick to a similar load to that, that load or something very close, that amount of weight, until either of the following things happen. Your reps fall out of your preferred stimulus to fatigue ratio range. You know, sets of 12 on their own are great. Sets of 10 are okay. Sets of eight, it's just not enough time moving the barbell and it's no good. So when you get below 10, you're like, fuck that, taking weight off the bar, getting back up to 12 to 15. Totally fine. Another one is if your reps fall much under five reps per set, then set for set, they're not as hypertrophic anymore because the volume of work isn't high enough. So then you say, okay, I hit this for eight, then seven, then five. Next set, I don't want to hit four. I'm going to do a down set. Totally fine answer, right? But you could get five, you know, two, three, or four sets before that happens in many cases. Next is you get a huge pump, tons of fatigue, and you know you're going to be way too sore to continue uh, uh, because, like, if you continue to do sets, you're going to be way too sore. You won't recover from next time. Then you, at the very least, stop that exercise. Maybe you have another exercise to do that hits the muscle from such a different angle that it doesn't contribute to net soreness. But more than likely, you're just done, and you just don't train that muscle anymore, and you go on to training forearms or calves or whatever other muscle people pretend to train but don't actually – And then another thing is if you know from prior experience or current experimentation that lowering the weight will make your next set have a notably higher stimulus to fatigue ratio, you absolutely can do that, which means some people will take five sets at the same load. Some people will take one set at some load and then incrementally drop down for multiple sets after. There's tons of detail here because in a maintenance phase, you probably don't want to do this. You just want to do straight sets and keep it simple because there's so few sets to do. Um, There's, you know, in sets of uh, 5 to 10, you definitely can have times for drops. In sets of 20 to 30, like, are you really going to down set something you got for 25 reps? What, so you can get another 26 with it? Like, 23 is just fine right after. Still in that high rep range. There's a lot of nuance there, but the idea that it's one top set, one drop set, it disappears. The idea is reality. Some people might have that. Some people might have three top sets, one down set. Some people may have just three top sets and, and nothing at all. And some people might have a top set, then a lighter set, then a lighter set, then a lighter set, and then they switch exercises and they go home. That two sets and one of them's higher than the other, and then that's it and you move on. It's a very thin slice of the variation in training everyone could be using, and it's not in the most optimal part of the curve either. It's on average actually far away from that, Right. The best results for exercise, for long-term benefit, usually between two to five sets per exercise, and it's usually three or four. So just two all the time is probably not great. You could even do up to seven sets of the same exercise in one session, and it wouldn't be too much, right? 
After you do your two to five, then you can switch exercises performing one to three total exercises per session per muscle group, almost never more than three. If you're training in a way or thinking of training in a way that has six exercises, each one of them is one top set, one, one down set, is really what it should be, then consider if that's the prescription that's right for you. And if it's not, and if, to be honest, you're like, man, actually, if I do two hard heavy sets, I feel the second one even better. Follow your feedback, follow your auto-regulation, do what's right instead of just maybe copying folks that are just doing something they also saw off Instagram, but they're just not a lot of steroids, so you follow them. Oh, that reminds me of me. Huh? See you guys next time.